Hey everyone, so today I'm making a video about cholesterol. This is a very basic video and it's dedicated to all of my patients who I see every single day because I don't have time to explain these things. Um, I'm going to explain what cholesterol is and why you should stop fearing it. Okay, before I go into the video, I just have one disclosure. I am anti-capitalist, so I'm quite... Um, mistrusting of pharmaceutical industry and I care about my patients and I want them to be healthy. I'm not funded by supplement companies or anything like that so I'm not trying to push any agenda. That being said let's explain what is cholesterol. So what I've noticed with most of my patients is that they are so terrified of cholesterol especially of course if you've had a heart attack or if you've had a stroke. It's understandable because you think that cholesterol causes heart disease. But most people don't actually know what cholesterol is. So let me explain. Cholesterol is something that is designed by Mother Nature that is present in every single cell in the body. So as you can see in this diagram of the cell membrane, every cell membrane in the body is rich in cholesterol. And the reason for this is that it has a lot of important functions. It allows our cell membranes to be flexible and allows cells to communicate with each other. That's not the only function. Hormones are made from cholesterol. So sex hormones are made from cholesterol. The stress hormone cortisol is made from cholesterol. And aldosterone, which is a very important hormone for regulating your blood pressure, is also made from cholesterol. So cholesterol is a raw material for hormone production. Vitamin D is made from cholesterol. No one can deny how important vitamin D is for health. Without cholesterol, you cannot produce vitamin D because when the sunlight hits your skin, the cholesterol that is stored within your skin cells gets converted into vitamin D. Next, bile acid is made for, from cholesterol. The liver produces something called bile acid, which is essential for digestion and absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Most of these vitamins are exclusively found in animal fat. And these fat-soluble vitamins actually prevent heart attacks. And the bile acids are essential to prevent constipation and ensuring you have good digestion. And it also promotes healing of the stomach lining. Um, now, every nerve cell in the body is lined by a sheath of myelin, which is made of cholesterol and fat. Every brain cell is made of this cholesterol-rich myelin. Not only that, high cholesterol is essential for the brain to function properly because um, the neurons communicate with each other through something called lipid drafts, which is rich in cholesterol. So this is how essential cholesterol is for our existence. And I think by demonizing cholesterol, we have demonized life itself. And we are spitting at nature. We are insulting evolution and mother nature. And I think truly that embodies what capitalism has done to humanity. Now, statin is actually a poison that is produced by mushrooms in order to kill animals, which is why the initial statins like lovastatin was removed from the market because a lot of people were dying from the side effects such as heart failure and cancer. Now, insulin. This is something really important because if your insulin is not working properly, you're going to get diabetes and diabetes is bad news. You're going to get increased risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, dementia, all sorts of complications, kidney damage, eye damage, nerve damage. Diabetes is bad. Okay, so insulin can only work properly if your cell membrane is rich in cholesterol. Okay. So if you do not have enough cholesterol in your cell membranes, you will become insulin resistant, which means you will develop prediabetes, diabetes, high blood pressure, etc. And that is why diabetes is a side effect of statins. And remember, insulin resistance and diabetes is the number one cause of heart attacks. The drug that we're using for heart attacks is causing diabetes, which is the number one risk factor for diabetes. Now, 
I want to explain what is HDL and what is LDL. So HDL and LDL is protein. They are not cholesterols. They are proteins that carry cholesterol within them. So now the next question we should ask is why are these proteins being produced by the body and why are they carrying cholesterol within them? So the reason that LDL carries cholesterol within itself is to um, deliver cholesterol to different parts of the body that need it. So I just explained various functions of cholesterol in the body, right? So um, if I'm stressed out and my body needs to produce a stress hormone, cortisol, LDL goes and delivers cholesterol to the adrenal glands and helps me produce cortisol in order to deal with a stressful situation. LDL delivers cholesterol to damage cell membrane. So whenever you smoke, for example, or you're very stressed, there's a lot of inflammation. And that will um, cause cellular damage. And LDL goes to that cell, provides cholesterol so that the cell membrane gets repaired. That is the function of LDL. It's a cholesterol delivery molecule um, protein. And HDL also has a function, which I will explain. So HDL has a function called reverse cholesterol transport. What that means is when there is damaged cell membrane, which can happen from smoking, which can happen from stress, which can happen from high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high levels of insulin in the body. What happens is HDL will take this cholesterol and then give it to LDL and then LDL gives it to the liver and then the liver will either throw away that um, cholesterol in the form of bile acid or it will recycle that cholesterol and use it for various functions. Okay, so I want to reiterate here that it doesn't make sense to call LDL bad cholesterol because without LDL, HDL cannot even do its function. Okay, so the whole bad cholesterol theory does not make any sense. And here's why. If you look at data from the WHO on 181 countries, it clearly shows that the higher your cholesterol, the lower your risk of death especially if you're a woman okay so this is data that can't be ignored just because of the number of people that are involved in this study and i'm going to explain why another study from korea 12.8 million people lower the cholesterol much higher the risk of death and high cholesterol especially between the range of 200 to 250 is associated with longevity here you can see, this is data on over 600,000 people, by the way, uh, long-term follow-up study. When you have really, really high LDL cholesterol, your risk of cancer is basically almost zero. Now, that's how bad LDL is, that when you have high LDL, you have really low risk of cancer. And this is all a paradox to the medical community. So here I'm going to explain to you why this is. What is the function of LDL? So I've already explained that LDL delivers cholesterol uh, to your nerves and to your organs in order to produce hormones, but it has a very important anti-inflammatory function. LDL is part of the immune system. So what this means is that whenever there is inflammation in the body, LDL goes to that area and fights that inflammation. And in that process, LDL may get oxidized or damaged. And when LDL gets oxidized, it gets taken up into a white blood cell and that forms a foam cell. And that foam cell gets into your arteries and starts forming a plaque. Now, let me explain this further. If you have an acute inflammation, suppose that I smoked a cigarette today, it's going to damage my arteries and it's going to damage and cause inflammation. My LDL will go and repair the damage and it will get oxidized. And that's how um, uh, a plaque might form. If I don't smoke ever again, I might not ever get a heart attack. But if I continue smoking a lot of cigarettes every single day and I have an unhealthy diet, I eat vegetable oils, I'm vegan and I don't get enough nutrients or I eat a lot of carbohydrates, I don't eat any fat, so my blood sugar keeps going up, I don't exercise. 
when all of these i have a lot of stress when all of these factors get gets combined our ldl is unable to deal with this much damage so the plaque goes on building up and when the plaque starts building up lp little a and hdl are two protective factors that actually prevent ldl from going and depositing in the artery so our body is so smart and has evolved over millions of years that we have all of these inbuilt innate mechanisms for healing but it is not designed to just deal with the amount of stress and the amount of um, processed food and um sedentary lifestyle that the modern day brings now ldl is rich in antioxidants so that's also further evidence that ldl has a function in the body it is rich in coq10 it is rich in vitamins and these vitamins are strong antioxidants which means that um whenever there uh, there is inflammation ldl tries its best to prevent getting damaged okay and this is why ldl is involved in heart attacks it is there in order to reduce the inflammation but when inflammation is uh, going on and on and on ldl is unable to keep up with it and that is why the plaque forms over many years okay now to test the ldl hypothesis the first question we should ask is do people with heart attacks have high ldl cholesterol the answer is no most of them have low ldl cholesterol around 100 105 so average uh, ldl is around to um, around 150 200 so most of them have actually low cholesterol but they have slightly high triglycerides and low hdl so this good cholesterol which they say is hdl right hdl is a very important marker of heart attacks if your hdl is low that's a sign of insulin resistance now the next test for the cholesterol heart hypothesis there is a diabetic drug called sglt2 inhibitors which is like a wonder drug and cardiologists use it all the time in heart failure they use it and now there's evidence that it prevents uh, dementia it reduces plaques okay this drug is so good that it actually reduces plaques in the heart it reduces heart attacks and it reduces um a lot of inflammation it causes weight loss how does it do that when you pee out sugar your body starts burning fat as energy and produces a lot of ketones and these ketones are really powerful anti-inflammatory agents okay which is why the keto diet works for all sorts of diseases there's plenty of evidence on this but as you can see this drug increases your ldl cholesterol so this is why the ldl cholesterol hypothesis is not true and it cannot be true and there is so much emerging evidence that this drug now even prevents dementia can you imagine that animals with high ldl and lp little a they have such high lp little a and ldl but they don't get heart attacks so is mother nature so stupid that this rule that um, ldl causes heart attacks only applies to humans but not to other animals i just can't seem to make sense of that now i can't deny that there is a small association of ldl with heart disease in men under 50 and the reason for this is stress stress causes heart attacks and stress basically increases your body's demand for cholesterol why because the stress hormone is made from cholesterol as i had explained now in the next section i'm going to quickly explain what is dyslipidemia so the association between heart attacks and cholesterol is actually dyslipidemia which is characterized by low hdl high triglycerides and damaged ldl ox ldl so this is a sign that there is a lot of inflammation going on in your body and other common associations will be abdominal fat high blood sugar and insulin resistance okay what diet treats dyslipidemia the best 
I've really looked into the literature for this and a ketogenic diet is the best studied diet which reverses all risk factors for heart disease. Um, it increases your HDL, it reduces your uh, inflammation, it reduces blood sugars, it causes weight loss and also reduces the damage that is done to your LDL particles. So I just want to reiterate that dyslipidemia so-called high cholesterol is actually caused by eating sugar and carbohydrates including whole grains if you're eating only whole grains and you're eating a low-fat diet then you are setting yourself up for dyslipidemia eating healthy fats improves dyslipidemia and um, healthy fats are fats that are basically traditional and ancestrally appropriate and opposite to what your cardiologist recommends so animal fats, saturated fats such as butter, ghee, um, coconut oil and um, monounsaturated fats like avocado, olives um, and then some nuts is good and omega-3s as well. Omega-3 is really, really important for your heart health. Um, so that comes from fatty fish and anchovies, sardines, salmon, things like that and also from grass-fed red meat. So just to reiterate, that is a function of LDL. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the evidence on statins.